Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to Hawaiian comfort food classics with a shot at the elaborately delicate matcha cream puff found at the legendary Lily Hop Bakery in Honolulu, Hawaii. Lily Hop Bakery, contrary to what its name implies, is actually a full-service diner open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And to be absolutely honest, I've never actually eaten any of their hot food, and I'm sure it is perfectly lovely. But by a large margin, Lily Ha's claim to fame are actually their baked pastries, cookies, and cakes found in their front room, of which there is a wide variety. For me though, my personal favorite since I was a kid has always been their matcha cream puffs, which are puffy bites of pastry that are light, airy, bite-sized, and basically like popping a delicate fluffy cloud into your mouth. For those unfamiliar, a cream puff is a pastry concept of French origin, which uses the French choux pastry dough to create a light and hollow bite of pastry. Then we're going to fill that pastry up with a whipped cream that's mixed with an East Asian powdered green tea known as matcha, which of course gives our cream puff its vibrant green color and floral sweet taste. Then finally, since this is Hawaiian food and excess is pretty much a requirement in Hawaiian cuisine, we're also going to top off our puff with even more matcha cream on top as well. Because, you know, I mean, why not? Okay, so let's get into it. Alright, so diving right in, we're starting things off today with our matcha whipped cream as it's going to need a little bit of extra time to cool down and stabilize. Going into my mixing bowl here are my dry ingredients. This is a quarter cup of white sugar to start, followed by a single tablespoon of matcha powder, a pinch of kosher salt, and finally two tablespoons of cornstarch to help stabilize our whipped cream. For those who have made whipped cream before, this is going to look a little bit different from your more typical whipped cream for hot cocoa and pies, because we're going to need our cream to be stable enough to pipe, which will be achieved primarily through the use of cornstarch, amongst a few other things. Next, going into my medium saucepan here is a half cup of heavy cream to start, followed by two tablespoons of butter and a quarter half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whoops. Eh, it'll be fine. Then last up, I'm separating three egg yolks here. Go ahead and ignore this third bowl, which I completely forgot to use. Then we're setting these aside for a moment while we head over to the stove. Over on the stove, I'm very gently bringing my butter cream mixture to a simmer over medium low heat, then adding in my matcha and sugar dry mixture next. I'm giving this a stir to combine with a whisk, then following up with my three egg yolks very slowly, one at a time. Now, at this point, this is where things started to get a little bit dicey for me because that cream and butter have a lot of fat in them. So if you're not careful, our fats and liquids can separate and break if you combine them too quickly, like this. So, moving a little bit slower with more constant whisking this time, I'm combining my egg yolks here until this thick and luxurious cream starts to form. Ooh. Then we're removing this from heat, covering it with plastic, and then pressing all of the air out of the plastic so that we may chill our cream for 6 hours or ideally overnight. Meanwhile, while our cream cools down, we're getting to work on our choux pastry here, which is elegant, simple, and as you might expect with all French things, just contains an absolutely absurd amount of butter. This is a half cup or a single stick of butter that I'm chopping up for no real reason, really. Then I'm adding this to my saucepan, followed by a single tablespoon of sugar and a pinch of kosher salt. Then next, we're employing one of my absolute favorite pantry-stable baking hacks, which is the use of some dried milk powder, about a single cup's worth reconstituted in cold water. Obviously, if you've got some fresh whole milk on hand, that's going to do just fine as well. But for me personally, as with most Asians, I am borderline lactose intolerant and basically never keep milk in the refrigerator, which makes milk powder a great pantry item to have on hand for baking. It is absolutely quite watery and the consistency is a little bit off and I definitely wouldn't recommend going off and eating a bowl of cereal with this stuff, but for baking purposes like this, you'll never tell the difference. 
Anyway, I'm adding this to my saucepan and then heading over to the stove and bringing this all to a gentle simmer before adding in a single cup of AP flour, about a tablespoon at a time. Again, stirring constantly. Our main objective here is to avoid letting that flour clump up, but we also want to do this over very low simmering heat or else you might accidentally start frying the stuff. Not good. We're following this handy Martha Stewart trick and checking the bottom of our saucepan to look for this thin film to start forming, which is generally a sign that you're ready to pull your saucepan off heat here. Back over in my mixing bowl, I'm cracking four eggs to add one at a time to my shoe dough, again agitating constantly. As with our cream, we're gonna go through various stages of stress and anxiety about whether or not this pastry dough is also breaking again. I admit, there were points where I thought I screwed this up, but just stick with it, keep on whisking, and I promise you'll end up with a nice, creamy, very unbroken pastry dough. Then next, I'm adding my dough to a pastry bag, affixing a 5 8 inch tip, and using one more Martha Stewart trick and adding a tiny bit of dough to each corner of my baking sheet before covering with parchment paper. Our shoe dough is going to be very sticky, so this neat trick is going to be useful in preventing that parchment paper from lifting off of the tray as we pipe. Moving on to our piping, we want to do our puffs in a circular motion as we lift up in order to avoid any fine points from capping off our pastry. Although these pointed ends are really pretty, they're also going to burn during the bake. So again, it takes a little bit of practice, but you've got 24 chances to get it right though. And if it does happen at any point, just flatten them out with some damp hands like so. Anyway, finally, I'm popping these into a 375 degree F oven for 20 minutes, and we should be greeted by these gloriously puffy, airy pastry bites. Here's a quick cross section, cause you know, for science. Our pastry should be almost entirely hollow inside thanks to the copious amounts of butter and egg that we used so that we may fill these up with a matcha cream next. Circling back to my cream here, this matcha cream has been chilling in the refrigerator for six hours now and has solidified into this very thick and pipeable cream. I'm adding this to another pastry bag with the finest tip that I own attached, then slicing a small incision in the bottom of my puffs so that we may pipe in some matcha cream here. Now, fair warning, this is gonna take a little bit of intuition and a lot of faith, cause it's gonna be pretty hard to tell if anything is actually coming out of the piping bag. If you're not sure, you should generally be able to feel the weight of the puff change as it fills up, which is the best metric of measurement that I've found so far, other than filling it until it explodes, which happened. Don't do that. Then finally, as promised, we're adding one more final dollop of matcha cream to the top of our pastries, because, you know, why not? And we're ready to eat. Alright, so I'll fully admit that pretty much any time that I venture into the world of baking, I am almost always outside of my comfort zone because baking is hard. That said though, I actually thought that this was a fairly approachable and doable pastry with only a small handful of pitfalls where things can go horribly wrong. And if you exercise just a tiny bit of extra caution at these moments, this is a relatively easy one to tackle. Our matcha cream is sweet and floral without being overwhelmingly sugary and is a nice complement to the buttery and rich qualities of our shoe pastry. Both the cream and the pastry are also very airy and puffy, which combine for just the most wonderful baked good that I have ever created. Also, while I am almost always preferential to chocolate pastries, there's just something about the vibrant green colors of our matcha that's just so gorgeous that it absolutely makes this one of my favorites in the Lily Ha display case. Finally, I do have to admit that I think that the matcha cream both on top of and inside of the puff was a little bit overkill, although from a presentation point of view, I can certainly see the reason why you would do this. In either case though, what are we really complaining about here? Cause I mean, can one really ever have too much whipped cream? Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series that we've been doing that's dedicated to recreating classic Hawaiian dishes from Oahu, where I spent a lot of my childhood. So definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet, because there's a lot of these. For the Hawaii locals and visitors, Lily Hop Bakery has a number of locations, although my favorite one is the one in Honolulu off of the Nimitz Highway, where you can grab some cream puffs and then walk over to the beach across the street. So definitely stop by if you have the chance. For the Bay Area locals, the Wu Can Cook Fried Rice Pop up is back at Oakland first Friday next week, so come by and say hi if you can. More about that at wucancook.com slash eats. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice humans, and I'll see you soon.